Good day, mate. Forty here. So I'm listening to the classic Robert Caro biography, The Power Broker, about Robert Moses, who was a New York City Parks Commissioner and influential New York City power broker from 1920s to about 1960. And in and uh, in around 1934, Robert Moses decides to run for governor of New York and he has the support of the old guard, right, the people with all the money, even though he's, he's pretty much a, uh, a progressive candidate, he's, he's running for the, as a Republican and he just does everything wrong. So the book is called The Power Broker, right, because Robert Moses was so good at how he wielded power but even people who are incredibly good at say, wielding power right they get in an unfamiliar situation one that's maybe not conducive to their success and they can just bollocks everything up it's so funny so until this point robert moses has only received the glowing treatment from the news media but now he's running for major political office for the first time he receives you know the kind of skeptical probing treatment that uh, the news media dishes out to someone who is a nominee for one of the two major parties and he reacts really badly like he starts lecturing the press i don't know about you but i don't like to be lectured so just the other day someone asked me about my resolutions for the new year so, oh yeah, I want to lose three kilograms, about 10 pounds. And the bloke said, oh, you want to know how to do that? I said, no. But he didn't care. He just went on lecturing me about how to lose weight. And I didn't want to hear it. And so people don't like to be lectured. But Robert Moses would just berate and lecture at the press. So the press had always given him really positive laudatory coverage but now he absolutely blows it with them and then he goes to many of his friends who he'd worked with who tended to be leaders of the democratic party and he just assumes their support he goes to dinner with them and uh, says oh, i assume i can count on your support and these are democrats he's running as a republican and they say no i'm a democrat and then he won't speak to them again for decades afterwards. Or he announces he's got the support of New York City's mayor when he doesn't. So he just misplays everything. He doesn't take any advice about how to be a politician. And the situation of being a politician is very different from being a bureaucrat or a pundit or a businessman. At different situations, different tasks, different roles require different skills. And just because you're good in business or a good power broker behind the scenes or a powerful bureaucrat doesn't mean that you're going to make a, a great politician. So he just completely misreads the situation. Someone is just so incredibly canny about power. So you're looking out at uh, Boyne Island here at low tide. Incredibly good with power, but gets himself in an unfamiliar situation and he just does everything wrong. So Robert Moses obviously is Jewish, but he gets really angry whenever anyone mentions that he's Jewish. He says, no, I'm not Jewish. Right? So that kind of inauthenticity is not appealing. He would uh, start his speeches by saying, no, I'm not here to represent the old God. When, and he complained about the news media is always portraying him as the representative of the, the moneyed interests. And that hadn't happened. I mean, there'd been barely any news media coverage of this, but even the hint of impropriety, even the hint of being in someone's pocket and, and Robert Moses would just go off and he'd make the very thing that he wanted to deny, he'd make that front and center as, as a major issue. Right? It's like when people say, oh, 
Now, Joe Blow is irrelevant. Well, if Joe Blow really was irrelevant, you wouldn't need to waste your breath saying that he's irrelevant. Or Bush administration officials would say that uh, Yasir Arafat, the leader of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, that he was irrelevant. Well, if he was really irrelevant, you wouldn't need to say so. So, Robert Moses, so skilled in the exercise of power in so many areas, but just completely misread the situation. Others wouldn't, wouldn't take advice, right? just assumed that he knew how to do things because he'd been successful in some areas of politics as a bureaucrat and behind the scenes player, just assumed that he'd know how to do it in running for major political office and it was an absolute disaster. So being so sure that you know how things work when you enter a new realm is uh, not very wise. Right? It, it's like the under owner who doesn't really like to work very much and uh, just wants to surf the internet on work time and just tells himself, oh, I can get away with it. Well, if you can get away with it, now why have you been fired 20 times? Right? If you can get away with it, why have you been humiliated and embarrassed so many times? If you can get away with it, why do you have so many poor performance reviews? So, as a 12-step uh, sponsor, you know, I love to hear my, my sponsees and my own excuses and, and then have my sponsees or I will sit down and write about, okay, this is the lie that I tell myself, oh, I can get away with it. But how's that working out? Right? What, what events, what humiliations, what disasters disprove my assertion that uh, I can get away with it? Or, or I can just skate by here on my charm and personality and good looks, all right? So <laughs> how many humiliations have I suffered with that kind of attitude.